There's so much that goes into this, this simple looking bread. Mm. I need a moment. Hi everyone, I'm Fanny Gerson. I'm here at the studio at Food 52. I'm so excited, I'm gonna share with you one of my favorite recipes from my cookbook, My Sweet Mexico, and it's actually one of my favorite all-time recipes. We're gonna be making pan de muerto, which is a very special bread that we make for the Day of the Dead celebrations in Mexico, which is where I'm from. So we're gonna get started right away. We have whole milk, dry yeast, orange blossom water, and bread flour. Now, I want to talk a second about orange blossom water. If you look at like Middle Eastern or specialty stores, that's where you're going to find great orange blossom water. You want the ingredients to be water and orange uh, blossom flour. That's it. Something like this uh, says orange blossom water, but if you read the ingredients, it has uh, alcohol, natural flavors and orange oil. Now this is great for something else, but you don't want to have something that has alcohol uh, with yeast as it's going to affect it, but also you want that delicious and very special flavor that the orange blossom gives it. Okay, so we're going to get started. You're just going to put your yeast, you're going to add your liquid. The order doesn't um, matter much. All you are trying to do is to dissolve it. So you dissolve it really quickly. You're gonna add the milk, and then you're gonna add a bit of the flour. And you just wanna make sure that it's all well incorporated, that there's no lumps, and then we're gonna let this, you know, kind of do its thing. Just room temperature is fine. Um, we're gonna cover it lightly, and you it's gonna take about 20 to 30 minutes. In Mexico, uh, we celebrate Day of the Dead, the first and second of November. The first of November, we celebrate the young ones that are no longer with us, and the second is a day where everybody gets celebrated. It's a joyous celebration. We prepare people's favorite foods, play their favorite music, and if you go to the cemeteries, it's just full of life and color, and it's a wonderful way to keep their memories and keep them with us in, in one way. And when it comes to the bread itself, there are actually hundreds of different varieties all over Mexico, and there are regional specialties that you don't see. This particular one is one of the ones that is most popular that you see all around Mexico. And every year I look forward to not just eating it, but making it. And I'm just so excited that now you're gonna get to make these at home. So now that the starter is ready, we're gonna be um, making the dough. And we have here some bread flour, sugar, kosher salt, milk, eggs, butter, and an orange. Don't worry about the quantities because you're gonna be able to see the recipe down here. <laughs> you can click on it. But I just want you to pay attention to you know how we do it. That's what I want you to focus on. Don't worry about the measurements. That's gonna come later. So we're gonna put the dry ingredients first. The order doesn't matter. They're just gonna mix all together. You're just gonna mix it on low for just like 30, 40 seconds. You just wanna make sure everything is well incorporated. All right, so once you have that, you're gonna add your liquid. Again, the order doesn't matter. Once you feel like it's pretty well combined, then you can add your starter. It smells so good. So once you stop seeing sort of lumps in your dough, and it starts coming off the sides and most of it is in the hook, which is right now, then you can add your, um, your butter. And this dough is gonna look super sticky, but you want to resist the temptation of adding flour at this point. Most often you're gonna need it more flour at the end, but you don't wanna add it right now because it's gonna be too tough. You can do this by hand, many people do, but you're gonna get a big workout. <laughs> so it's preferable to do it in a standing mixer if you can with a hook attachment. Uh, this particular dough, because also you would warm it a lot with your hands, but it's, it's definitely doable and we've done it before. Okay, so now all the butter has been incorporated. 
It looks quite sticky, but nice and smooth. And we're gonna leave it there for about 15, 20 minutes. What you're looking for is it's gonna start to come off the sides, but it's gonna take quite a bit of time to get there. So just be patient. So pretty. Nice. It feels soft, very soft, but it still has like a nice pull to it and it has some body to it, so some structure. So I'm just gonna add, you want to add, you know, between like, you know, you don't wanna add more than six tablespoons of flour. It can go up to that. But we're gonna add just a little bit to make sure we get every single part of the sides. There it is, I have this beautiful dough. And then I'm gonna take my bowl, I'm gonna take the wrapper that I had from before and just put it, you can also use a little bit of oil. You just need something so that it doesn't stick to the bowl. How beautiful that is, all right. and everything just comes out and it's very smooth. It's super soft, super smooth. And then what I like to do, this is one of the things that I don't think it's on the, and the recipe in the book, but you wanna put just a little bit of flour on top, not measure it, and then you're gonna cover it. You're gonna let it rise at room temperature, just in the counter. Um, you wanna make sure your room is not too hot, so don't put it on top of the stove or anything like that. And you're just gonna let it double, and then we're gonna punch it, and we're gonna wrap it and leave it overnight. All right. So now comes the trickiest part, which is shaping, but it's also super fun. Now, this dough is the one that we had rested overnight. Well, this is another one we had rested before. And we unwrapped it, we covered it with plastic, and we let it come to room temperature. If this is your first time making it, though, you could actually, it's a bit easier to shape when it's cold. Now we're just gonna put a little bit of flour on our working surface, and we're going to punch it down again, and just gonna set it here. Now we're gonna be shaping it, and the shapes of, of this particular bread is to symbolize, you know, represent kind of the bones. And what you don't wanna do is you don't want to pull it out. This is what you don't wanna do. You don't wanna cut it this way. You wanna take a knife or a cutter like this, and you're gonna take just a little bit of it, you know, and you're gonna set it aside. And then you're gonna take the rest of your dough. If you have a scale, it's gonna make it easier. And you're gonna divide it into two. If you don't have a scale, then what you, what you may wanna do is have two different sheet pans just because you want them to be even when they bake. So you wanna have uh, a sheet pan ready, put a little bit of butter or spray underneath and then just put a little bit of parchment paper on top. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make the, the rounds, so the, the dome part. Now this is, again, this is a very soft dough and what you're gonna do is kind of pull it together, right? Tighten it. So you're gonna tighten it, and then you're gonna put a little bit more flour. And if you feel that this is too soft at this point, then you're not gonna be able to shape it. While you do this, you can also cover it and put it in the fridge. We're gonna do that. <laughs> I'm gonna show you what you're not gonna do first. <laughs> you don't wanna do this, because you're just like moving it around in this direction. What you're trying to do is you're gonna put in this palm of your, in the palm of your hand, and at the same time, your fingers are gonna kind of be tucking it underneath. So I just wanna show you, and then we're gonna kind of. So all you're trying to do is get like a smooth surface and that it feels 
a bit tight, okay? And then we're gonna place it on our sheet pan. At this point, if you're having a really hard time, just add a little bit more flour. But it's not sticky, you know, and that's, that's perfect, but it is a softer dough. All right. So once you have it like that, you wanna press down lightly, and then we're gonna shape the bones that go on top. Now you're gonna take a little piece, and you're basically doing the same thing we did, but this one you can't see, it's too little to do with the whole hand, so. You can do them one by one, or you can do them, both of them at the same time. So you have this little round that's tight. We're just gonna set it off to the side. And now um, we're gonna take this piece, and again, you can eyeball it, or if you wanna be exact, you can take you know, half of it. From this, we're gonna be making the bones that are gonna go on top. So you're just going to divide it into three. This is mostly decorative, and then we're gonna shape it. So now this is the part where you need to pay attention, okay? You're gonna sort of form little, kind of like ropes. Don't worry about them being perfect or exact. What you wanna make sure is that they're at least, you know, the length of the round that you have, but it's gonna be a little bit longer once you start shaping it. And you want to form all of these before so that by the time you do the last one, you can take the first one that's been resting and you can start to shape it. Now you're gonna take your rope. Again, don't worry if it's perfectly shaped or not. It doesn't matter. All it matters is you're gonna give it, you know, the, the little shapes of bones. So you want kind of like a, a thick, thin, thick, thin situation, but you don't wanna make them too thin because as it grows, they can break in the oven. So you're making different indentations. And so you're gonna take your fingers and you're gonna move it around and you're gonna see how it's kind of like big, small. You're gonna leave a gap then you do the same thing, right? And it doesn't have to be a specific number, you know? We, I like to do kind of like six. Another way you can do is you wanna make sure the one in the center is flat, so because that's where you're gonna, that's where they're gonna cross and you're gonna put the little ball on top. So you're just gonna sort of do that one first. And then you can go to the sides. And then you can do it again. And then you can go back and repeat. And if you notice, as you do this, this expands. So it's gonna be bigger than the round you have, and that's exactly what you want. And now, once you get comfortable with it, you can, instead of doing it sort of like that, you can do it all at the same time. And if something like this happens, like this is, this is perfect to show you, this is too thin. You have a couple of options. You can kind of press it together or you could re-roll it, you know? I think we managed to do that. Now you have your bones ready. One of the um, trickiest things when you put the bones is that they tend to slide off uh, when you make them, when you, when, as it rises and then when it bakes. So one way to avoid that is to just brush it with a little bit of water and then it's gonna help it stick together. You're not trying to like soak it in water, it's just kind of think of it as like a glue. And then you're gonna put one in the center. Again, you wanna make sure that sort of a flatter piece is right at the center. And then you're gonna put three in each one. And once it's there, you can kind of move them so that they're even, and this is exactly what you want. You want them to be a little bit bigger than your round underneath because this is going to expand. And right now we're not gonna put the, the ball. You're gonna press this slightly. 
And then we're gonna repeat with the other one. Beautiful. Isn't this so beautiful? It really makes me so happy to make. Okay. So now, again, you just press lightly and you leave the ball to the side. We're gonna add this at the end. So now, these are so beautiful. We're gonna let them rest so that they can rise um, one more time before we bake them. So we're just gonna cover it with a cloth and we're gonna let them double at uh, room temperature and we'll be back in a bit. All right, so I've preheated my oven to 350 while um, we had our dough rising, our shaped breads. Are you ready? They're so pretty. And if you, they're, they, they feel kind of firm. They've doubled. When you press, they bounce right back, which means they're ready to go. So now we have a little bit of cold water again to be able to glue the, um, the little rounds. And the reason you don't put that, because really, even if you put the water, for some reason, the rounds, I guess the weight or the shape of them, like makes them go like that. And so you wanna avoid that. And you just put them here. And our oven is ready to go. And so we're gonna put them straight in our 350 degree oven. Our breads are ready. Aren't they beautiful? They baked about for about 40 minutes. And after about 30 minutes or so, they had this nice golden hue to it, both in the bottom and on the top. And so we just covered them with a little bit of foil just so that they wouldn't get any darker. But, um, but you don't have to. If you like it darker, it's just a matter of, of preference. They won't get burnt. And we've let them cool slightly, but they're still warm. And the way we tested they were done is by using a thermometer. So we inserted a thermometer through the bottom and it was 190 degrees Fahrenheit. But if you don't have a thermometer, another way to look at it is you want an evenness to the color, like I said before, in the bottom, in the top. And it's going to feel slightly lighter than when it looks like when you go like this, you know, when it's in the oven. Um, it's, it's not a kind of bread that you can kind of go like this and make a, a hollow sound, but it should feel a slightly lighter than what it looks like. While it's cooling, you melt your butter. You let that cool a little bit as well. And then we're gonna have just some regular granulated sugar. Now this is the traditional uh, way, but, or the most common way I should say, because there's many traditions in Mexico. But you can also flavor your sugar. You can put cinnamon, you can put cardamom, you can make it your own. We do a version at La Niorquina where we blend granulated sugar with Mexican cinnamon. And we've also tinted it. We've used turmeric, we've used hibiscus, we've used uh, freeze-dried raspberries, you know, just to give it some nice colors. But honestly, it's just delicious and, and beautiful as is. Okay, so now, you're gonna grab it from the bottom and you're gonna take a brush and you want to make sure you're very generous with your butter. So you're probably gonna have butter left over from what the recipe calls for and that's okay because you can reuse it but you wanna make sure you have enough. Now you wanna make sure that you get all the little creases in here and that you get it all the way to the bottom. So I like to start kind of on the bottom part. So now we have a very generous amount. Everything is covered. Once it's all nice and covered with butter, you're gonna take your sugar and you're just gonna, I like to kind of start in the bottom as well. But you can just also just go like that. You just wanna get as much of the sugar as possible. There's so much that goes into this, this simple looking bread. And I just think it's, I never get tired of it. Okay, beautiful. And then you just kind of want to tap it, tap a little bit of the excess. And that's it.
So this is the best part. Now we're gonna get to taste it. I'm gonna get to taste it. <laughs> but I also wanted to show you this um, very special version that we make that has a delicious Mexican chocolate filling and it's covered with a powdered sugar cinnamon concoction of sorts. So I'm ready. I hope that you guys get to make it and try it and oh my god look how soft that is literally my mouth is watering mm. Mm. i need a moment <laughs> mm. it's just so soft <laughs> oh it's just it's so good mm. Mm. This one. Oh. Ta da! Mmm. Mmm. Maybe <laughs> one of each. It's so good. I'm gonna open a little bit more so you guys can see. Yeah. It has. Mmm. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope you make it. I hope you have a wonderful celebration for those of you who also celebrate this holiday. And um, I'm just gonna take this. Bye. I can't wait for you guys to try it. I'm so excited that you've never had it.